All right, you guys, we are diving back in finally. This is uh back into the the frat boy 4chan theory that uh is a review essentially. Um last time we covered this, we had half the subs that we currently have, so I feel like there's quite a few people on here that might not know a lot about it. Maybe they do. Hmm. I, I don't know, but I thought it's a good time for us as a whole to go back through it and kind of start from there, you know? Um, so what do you think of the 4chan frat boy theory? Um, I feel like it's a plausible theory. Yeah, I do too. And I, I think too. it could have happened without anybody trying to frame Brian Koberger. I think that the argument against the 4chan theory is that um, f there's no way because then either these frat boys would have had to have gone out of their way and randomly pick Brian Koberger for who knows what reason, like it doesn't make sense um, and, and try to frame him or the cops picked him. And again, why Brian Koberger? And it just, that's what the argument is against it is like for the, I don't agree. I don't think it means that somebody had to pick Brian Koberger and try to frame him for this to be true. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And, and I also think that it's important to note here that as we're going through this, um, this could be set up in a whole bunch of different ways too. It, it could be Brian Koberger's involved in some way with uh, these people. He could be a lookout. He could not be involved at all and be completely separate. I think it could go a lot of different ways. Yeah, I think that him being involved with these uh, frat boys is the least likely scenario based off of his personality. Um, but I, I just, I don't see that really, but, um, I think that Brian Kober could essentially be, if this were, you know, in a universe where it's like true, um, he could be a victim of circumstance, like was literally out driving that night. Yeah. I, I think that's a, a realistic possibility too. Um, and that's the whole reason we are digging into the investigation at all is to find out what we believe the likelihood is of these things happening. Absolutely. Absolutely. So those of you watching, if you have not watched our first 4chan frat boy theory videos, you really should watch those. Um, it gives a full layout going into the statistical evidence around the Greek life, uh, how dangerous the Greek life is. Mm -hmm. It goes into the statistics around, uh, it, it's so clear. It's one in two. So almost 50% of fraternity brothers leave college and the Greek life at the end of, you know, getting their degree and have an addiction or alcoholism problem. I mean, yeah, one of the uh, presidents of um, a fraternity chapter there in Moscow literally died after leaving. He was a president. Yeah. He died of an overdose. Yeah. Twice, actually, because he went to the ER and then went out and uh, like officially died. Yeah. And wasn't be able, he wasn't able to be brought back. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so this is clearly that, this is clearly a, a subject close to that town. Like, yep, they party. No, absolutely. they do. They absolutely party. And uh, another important factor is uh, that women uh, in sororities, one in three are assaulted during their time. We like, also have an essay case from that town. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So. Um, I think all those stats are really important when you're taking into consideration the background likelihood of something like this happening, right? Because I think the easy, uh, the easy go to here is like, there's no way these kids could have done it. These are just a, a bunch of young, drunk, acting dumb kids, right? Yeah, like they're all idiots. 
Yeah, yeah. And just partying and have no care or concern for something like that. And and the statistics say otherwise. So um, make sure you guys check them out. But we'll get right into this here. And I think there is some very interesting evidence. I want to get through like what this is. I guess we can go through it piece by piece. But uh, okay, the background into the the 4chan frat boy theory around well starting december 11th of 2022 4chan started having these posts come up right and for those of you that are new 4chan is a relatively anonymous platform i mean you can go in there uh and post anonymously uh and it gives you a uh a number an id code uh that that's generated for that login time or you can have a profile you can do either or uh well somebody hopped on there on 1211 and started talking about this crime so december 11th is when nobody knew about Brian Koberger. Nobody had any details. There was no PCA out. There was no real information out other than the uh, fact that they were looking for a knife sheath. Mm -hmm. Interesting. No details about how the victims were found. No details about the actual crime scene and, other than college students that might have seen it during that morning fiasco. Right. And and we knew they were looking for a K-bar knife. The sheath was only speculation, but it was being heavily speculated around the Internet because they were looking for that specific, very specific knife. Um, you know, Papa Rogers and also many other people were saying, well, maybe they left like a sheath of some kind. Because when you look up K-Bar, it comes with a sheath. And it's like, well, why that knife? Well, did the person leave behind a sheath? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, these posts have been a major point of contention for uh, people that believe Brian Koberger is guilty uh, and people that believe Brian Koberger is innocent. People that believe he's guilty, uh, a lot of them believe this is Brian Koberger on here. Um, and uh, it, it, in my opinion, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Do I think that it all of these things are possible? Yeah, absolutely. But I don't think Brian Koberger's writing this, and we'll get into why i i absolutely do not think it's brian koberger writing it and you know we've had people like content creators that that believe koberger is guilty that think he wrote this because there's so many intimate details that it's like not possible yep. for somebody who wasn't really close to this crime to have written this it isn't possible mm -hmm. they knew things way before the pca Yep. Like literally over 20 days, like mm -hmm. 20 days, almost exactly before the PCA. And we had as a public literally had nothing. Yep. We had nothing. We had scraps. We didn't even know what floor Dylan was on um, or did we? Yeah. But um, it, it's interesting. And my argument against it being Brian Koberger is that you would have to know intimate relationship details of how these sororities, fraternities, and people connected with this crime, how they interacted, how they knew each other, like so many intimate details that you would have to spend a long time stalking their social medias and being in close vicinity to them and at yep. parties to know. I agree. I agree. So we'll kick it off here. And, and for those of you watching too, um, I'm going to change words that I don't feel like are appropriate to have on here. Just so you know, it's not going to change uh, the content or anything like that. I'm just going to leave out some mm -hmm. words. And then another thing is I'm, I'm not going to use last names. I'm going to use first names. Uh, it, it's a pair of Davids and these, this has been presented all over the internet. Otherwise, I do not like putting people's names out there, but uh, they are already out there and you can very easily find yes. who they are if you're curious. So, yeah. Um, 
and all their social media is locked down and everything. So there's nothing you can find. And that's another big piece of evidence here. So starting on December 11th of 2022, this was at what? So, uh, seven, six, 15 PM, uh, a plus in poli sci two, three, five, your Catholic homeboy, David two, playing white, super lame, and is the alibi for his boyfriend, David One. Uh, David One killed all of them while David Two stood by in the area. Lacrosse and wrestling for David One with his K-bar. That knife is in Garden City, planned and talked about it in high school uh, at Bishop Kelly. Absolute jerks. 20 years. Check David Two's Twitter. Um, is what he is not funny, pathetic. So apparently, okay. And I can't find this picture. So if anybody has it, David too posted something on his Twitter showing them, uh, like in masks from that night. Hmm. Interesting, right? Yeah. So these are in order here, you guys, too. So um, so next we have Monday, December 12th, the 2022, and this is at 4.50 p.m. I wonder if, if David 1 realizes David 2 is going to turn on him. Think about how weak David 2 is to be led by David 1. If police interrogate him, it's over. He'll cut a deal because he didn't actually commit the crimes. He stood guard, and he's weak-minded and easily influenced. Plus, his family has all the money. He's the one from uh, uh, an important family from the area, and he'll get a good lawyer. I didn't include that last time, uh, but I thought it was interesting, right? It gives you a little bit of background. You skipped the bottom sentence. These guys are. Does David one think he has a chance? Mm. Um, this met okay, so this is December 12th and at uh 6 54, so 7 p.m. This message to shriveled um testes David one and his um B David two. We know you did it. It's only a matter of time. Remember those photos you took in your masks the night of and the photos of David one one's bandaged hand the days after the event. The photos peeping into the house from the outside windows. You really thought you could those could be deleted. All the apps you I don't want to say that word. Um our word zoomers have on your Phones have access to your photos and data. Law enforcement is obtaining them and these various tech companies now. You were really dumb enough to log this evidence on your phone while they had while you have TikTok on your phone. It'll be your downfall. Zoomer scum. Then it has uh set so this is December David. One and David Two did this. Absolute jerks. Uh, David Two has a crap video feed. Um, and did you know David Two? Like that that poli sci is because David Two um, tutored Ethan. Did you know that? Oh, wild, right? In poli sci. Yep. Specifically. Mm hmm. Yep. Oh, gosh. Yep. So more of a connection. He says, uh, bruh, David 1 did end them, and David 2 was the alibi on standby. Thriller kill. Sick dudes. Watch homeboys tutor vids for no excuses. Homeboy an absolute uh, dork and joined a frat because he could never get a spray tan. So they're just talking trash. Let me... I'm going to go to... I mean, the, all of it's talking trash. Yeah, yeah. But I want to go to the important one. Okay, right here, you guys. This, this is the important one. Um, so, December 22nd. December 12th, 2022. 
Bruh, you can see the King Road from David One's room. Once that third floor light turned off, they did it. 19 minutes total, walk included. Talked about this at uh, high school and um, Sigma Chi. David One and Ethan, which called E, got into a fight that night, allegedly talking trash. Uh, David One had problems with with Mads also. This crap's been brewing since Fall Rush last year. Uh, they went quiet on SM for two weeks before and after the deed. David Two's mom's a paralegal, so he knows not to say anything. David One cleared his social media. Um, had to take a crap. SX. 22 saw Ethan X and David two and David one at the party. David two, David one and Ethan had issues back to Ethan rushing. Ethan talked trash about David one taking roids and having his, uh, ball shrivel. David one was mad. He wanted Xana, uh, for dumb youngins like, Ethan, tutors are assigned. David, too, blew it with Ethan. Ethan is a second-year fresher. Uh, David, too, also self-conscious about his um, racist word blood um, and, and talks trash. David, one, and David, two, talked about this in general for a while. Talked about leaving their phones behind and on YouTube on autoplay. No pings, no guns, too loud. Area dead early Sunday mornings. See, that's what I was thinking the whole time is that it's really dumb to commit a crime like this as Koberger in his car driving through university towns that have so many cameras on a Sunday morning when everyone is passed out drunk after a game. Mm -hmm. That's like, I feel like the dumbest time you could do it. Yeah. Because yep. you are immediately going to be identified. Yep. Yep. And no, I feel I like he would you. know that, especially considering he's a criminologist in Pullman with access to CCTV footage. I agree with you. I agree with you. And, and for you, for you guys and that the will see this on the screen too, um, I want you guys to listen to a very important part here. So nicknames are being used here. Okay. And I have evidence to prove that as well, uh, which I'll put on the screen. So actually, what am I, where am I at here? Okay. So remember I'm there. I'll put up on the screen right here. This is the Sigma Chi uh, frat social media posting a, a remembrance for Ethan, okay? They say, fly high, E. We will miss you forever. That's from Sigma Chi Brothers, posted on their social media. So that is evidence. It's not somebody guessing like, well, we don't really know if we they called him E. No, they did. They did, all right? They called him E. They called uh, Maddie Mads. and. Uh, you know, Kaylee, bec because of the size of her chest. So, um, I don't, obviously, like, talking like that is not important. I think it takes away from the story altogether, and it makes it hard for me to read it. That's why I'm trying to uh, change those words. We did it like that the first time, too, because what's important is the content that's being talked about here, right? Yeah, because um, people will get offended by some of the names when really, before this crime happened, they were maybe a bit objectifying, but what college guy isn't objectifying women? Right. Um, but, I mean, because that's that's what's running through your blood at the time. Testosterone, you know? Yeah. And also, but they're terms of endearment usually at the same time. That's yeah. what a nickname is. That like that's what you're known for, and that's why people like you, yeah. kind of thing. It's it's yeah. a term of endearment, usually. So yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. So uh we'll 
try and get through the rest of them here. Uh, uh, David too even calls out the crap media media saying Kaylee was target. That is false. Kaylee's bad luck targets were Ethan, Zana and Maddie Mads. Maddie talked about David one, never acknowledged David two. Uh, Maddie right about that one. He is an idiot. David one should have taken out David two. WKF, Dirty South, Loach, WKF, Dirty South, David 1, and Ethan hated each other. Uh, David 2 got a bid for a house because the GPA sucked and uh, the fraternity was on their butts about it. David 2 is schizo, Dirty South, and Ethan could not be more opposite. Mads did talk crap. Dirty was also pissed with Rogaine. Jack had to charge. No plug. Mads was also the target. Kaylee was not the target. Just bad luck. That's a known fact. High probability some brothers are aware. Rogaine has ample opportunities and will play grieving boyfriend. David, too, actually talked about this in detail in the past. Wearing elect electrician's glove, putting on baggy clothes after, and walking away. By the way, David Two's dad works for a professional cleaning company that was disposed of in Garden City during Thanksgiving weekend. And then this one talks about the four different people, and this is really important. So it says it. You know, you know, something interesting I wanted to point out that you read back, like it was not that message you just read, but the one before it, uh -huh. um, they mentioned cell phones, like leaving them Correct. running at home, which is interesting because this is before Koberger and the cell phone pings when we're all like, why wouldn't you just leave at home running? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. So you're telling me they wouldn't be smart enough to leave Xana's TikTok running or make a DoorDash order? Yep, yep. I'm I'm gonna read this one more. Uh, there's a couple more uh, uh, 4chan posts that aren't as important, you guys. But this one is okay, and then we can go through the evidence. So it was a thrill kill, joked about for a while, that became real in early November. They had thought about this for a long time, some up to a year classic behavior okay uh some sense high school in jokes in and in their imaginations even bought four identical knives as a gag coveralls for the laughs picked out lakes and fire pits to get rid of stuff right it i mean that's beyond joking in my opinion um yeah clearly they split it they split up to watch the roommates all night at the Sigma Chi party, at the, I'm not going to say that word, at a bar, at the truck, they worked up the courage doing drive-bys of 1122 King, checking the house lights before they stashed uh, kill kits and fresh clothes for after, for after, drop the girls off because they are explainable if caught sneaking in and settle the dog in the empty room. Getaway car is parked a little way from the house as the meetup if they ever had to scatter with anywhere from two to five killers in the house. It's easy to subdue the drunk sleepers quickly and quietly. Everyone heads to their preferred victim and stabs away. The basement girls were the least offensive so would have been last but locked doors and already having their kills they swap their murder wear for average zoomer stuff and head to the car <clears throat> they find themselves behind some kids getting busted that night and have to take a longer route to the car so it takes a bit to get back to to bridget's Wait for the flock to flee town when news hits for cover out to, uh, you know, middle of nowhere to burn the clothes, gloves, mask, toss the knives in the lake and get that car detailed. Only uh, Bridget and Frats need to get through Barney's early interviews in can 
with canned responses and now just keep everyone drunk and messed up so the weak, weakest link doesn't squeal. Okay. This is at 1214. Okay. And you verified the the number? Mm-hmm. The ID is the same as all the others? No, no. There's two different th- there's two different writing here. Two different people writing. But okay. You, you can tell in their Tw- writing style it's different. 1214. Did anybody know about the guys running in the background of the Banfield footage yet? I I'm going to have to look it up. I don't believe so. I don't believe because so. Because that sounds exactly like Banfield. That that's why I wanted to get through this because there's some really major pieces of evidence that I feel like a lot of people miss here, okay? The big one that we've talked about before is the four people running through Banfield, okay? And uh the other one is the uh the kill kits and the gloves and the baggy clothes being able to take that off. We know the crime scene was at least somewhat controlled, right? We know that there's a latent footprint there, right? (gasps) Uh, What if you had people helping you change? That's why there's no tracks, because these people are standing outside the door while one person's going in attacking and they have the bag and you stand there and change. And a latent footprint is a mishap. They just wipe up as they're leaving. Yeah. Look, you guys, I think this is a very real possibility, okay? If if there's evidence proving Brian Koberger ends up not being the guy. Exculpatory, yeah. yeah I, I think that it's very possible police do this. We've covered stories over and over and over and over and over again. And I'm not coming at this in an offensive way. Dude, look at Christopher police, Tapp. Look at Christopher Tapp. Yeah, police do this all the time. They think they got a lead, okay? And you have a suspect that maybe is calling in a different lead every day on a different phone. Okay. Somebody that's, that knows tech, I could call in with a number, different number every single day, every single day, a different number. I can use voice changers. I can use all kinds of stuff so that once you, all of a sudden they, they start realizing and tracking these leads. Like, wait, we have like 10 people pointing out this one person's name. We need to look into this guy. You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden you have law enforcement doing this. Is this a possibility? Or you see one little lonely white Hyundai Elantra driving down Main Street and you think, hmm, that's weird. Yeah. Does this explain? And then there's a white car in the neighborhood and you just assume that's the car. Right. Does this explain the four people we see running that that little bit of unplanned you know you know what would prove this hmm. is if police pulled the records for these people we we definitely have three names here okay one of them is a female and then we have two davids police need to pull their cell phone info their background application data was youtube running if it is, and we said this last time, if it is, then we have problems here. Major problems. And here. it says they drove by the house. Uh, it says they were stalking them. That's what it says. Yeah, but didn't it say they made multiple passes in a car? It said that night they split up between the groups of people. So there were people watching Ethan and Zana at Sigma Chi, and there were people watching Maddie and Kaylee. Jack. Showalter. But I he's mean, not in Sigma Chi. No, I, I don't know if it... I, I have no idea. That, that To me, that's a 50-50 flip stretch. I have no idea. Yeah, he's not know. even in Sigma Chi, though, so that yeah. doesn't even make sense. Yeah, I just have no idea. I've never looked into him at all. I have no idea. Um... But was he with them making sure they were okay? Yeah. Yeah, he probably was. And I would also don't think that's weird either. No. I mean, being a, a, a drunk girl in a college town, clearly from the statistics, is pretty dangerous. <laughs> you know? And they were wasted. And they were all at the bar together. 
So it makes sense to walk them home just to be nice. You know what would prove this? Mm. A very skilled blood spatter expert. There's no way all these people are the same height. There's no way all these people have the same length of arms. There's no way all these people uh, did the motion in the same way on both floors. There would be variances from the crime scene. And that's something that Ann Taylor could look into, right? We know how, mon- how many photos there are. There's like 10,000 photos. There's a lot. Yeah. And should be should be reaching out to one of the nation's leading spatter experts and having them look into this, in my opinion. I agree. I think there's enough here. So for you guys that are listening, that are new viewers, one of the 4,000 new since last time this came out, none of this information was out yet. No. None of this information is out, okay? Now, the Brian Koberger aspect, do I think it could be somebody setting somebody up? Sure, I do. However, the, uh, the nicknames are really important, you guys. They are really important because these are the nicknames that only somebody close to them would know. Yeah, they would. And what's interesting here is we hear all of these things that we, that the community has put together as what would make sense, right? What makes sense to control a crime scene in this way? Oh, a kill kit to make sure that you're not dragging DNA out with you, uh, getting it done inside the house, you know, doing the deed, changing, whatever. Uh, that's here before anything has come out. Leaving your phone running at home. Yeah. That's stuff that was said too. Yeah. I don't know, you guys. I hope that, uh, you know, this is as interesting for you. For me, it's concerning. It makes me nervous. Uh, I, I I hope the police have looked thoroughly into these people. Um, it's, it, it makes me nervous hearing that one of these four people is some big shot. And because they're a big shot in the state or their family is, that means that you didn't look into them like shame on you. Uh, If that's the case, um, another interesting thing is that one of these, so these two people are no longer at that school. They are no longer at this school. Okay. That's another key piece of evidence. Okay. Um, Now. Two of the locations that they claim have been traveled to, you know, you know, those locations are on our analytics on our 4chan video as some of the highest watch time. And it's like a random city. No way. It's not a major city. That's super creepy. Yep. Jeez. Well, if you're watching over there, I mean, you can reach out. We can chat. Yeah. You know that family that you were talking about? Um, it's known as a mystery people of Europe because their presence has been speculated since prehistoric times and people track it through Ancestry.com. It's what? That family you were talking about that's like a big shot family. Really? It's dated back to prehistoric times. Wow, that's and interesting. People track it like you know. There's videos on. Oh, I'm this. I I have that DNA. What does it mean? You know, like because it's a super important and s- mysterious people. Huh, that's interesting. It's really weird, actually. Really interesting. I'm gonna have to look more into it now because I'm super curious. So essentially, what we're saying here, not not us. What these are saying here is that to break it down and, and you know, compile it all together, what is said to have happened is that 
there are these two Davids, and these two Davids were friends, okay? I know it says in here they were lovers. I have no idea, and that doesn't matter. It doesn't mean anything. They're associated with each other for whatever that means. It doesn't matter. Um, and these two Davids had issues with Ethan, uh, and it started back when they rushed together, it sounded like. One of those Davids was uh, tutoring Ethan while his be it best friend was the other David that hated Ethan. So there was like some weird like teaching tutor triangle, it sounds like, whatever was going on there. They uh, got into an argument that night at Sigma Chi that everyone saw. Uh, Xana was involved and Ethan. It, it says in these messages there was some animosity because one of them actually wanted to be with Xana and, you know, she was with Ethan. Um, and it sounds like Maddie had their back and was talking trash because of that whole drama situation too. That is what caused Xana, Ethan and, and Maddie to be the targets. Okay. They, these people started joking about what it would be like to end somebody years ago. And, uh, it became more real and more real and more real over time till it became a point where they bought matching coveralls, Dickie's coveralls, and they K bar knives, they bought matching knives. And we hear all the time there's K bars all over, uh, with Sigma Chi and that house and all over the place. Yeah, there's right? legit pictures. Yeah, no, there are legit pictures. And, um, they, uh, and it finally became real enough. There was enough, you know, drama between them where they decided to do it. So there were four people, four victims and the evidence of them running by. I mean, that that's interesting. You guys, that is very interesting. So they went and they watched. This was planned the entire day. They watched them that entire night. Once they went back, they prepped and got everything ready, set their phone up to play while they were gone. Um, and then they went in and, and did the deed and helped each other leave without leaving any evidence. So how, if this is real, how Brian Koberger's DNA got on the scene, I don't know. If they're smart enough to leave their phones running at home so that they're not tracked, aren't they smart enough to buy time uh, by making phone calls or opening TikTok or, you know, like ordering food? My only question, though, is like, why? How would they know Xana's passcode over Ethan's? We actually don't know if there was any activity on Ethan's phone that night. He's the only one. Who has apparently no cell phone activity because Xana's is mentioned, Kaylee's is mentioned, Maddie's is mentioned, mm -hmm. um, which almost makes me question was there none on Ethan's or did it not fit the narrative? Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting so, for sure. I mean, because they're worrying about being tracked, clearly, they know something about phones. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They know that they know. you can be tracked easily with phones. And honestly, a lot of younger people these days feel like they're being spied on constantly by technology because that's common knowledge now mm -hmm. that you are. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they're probably thinking like, well, we got to make sure it looks like they we weren't here this long. Yeah. You know? It's interesting. It's interesting. I'm Three glad other male DNAs on I scene. Clearly on items of importance because they only wanted to use the knife sheath because that is the most important object as everyone's argued well they got three other pieces you guys what's that from what are those important objects that they swapped yeah i mean you guys the the narrative fits like this is a theory that i think could be real uh objectively here not subjectively right and we don't have any buy-in whether this is true or not we're just trying to understand what the heck is going on and uh get justice for these victims because this should have never happened and if a story like this is real we have four people that can never and should never be out in public i don't care how much money you have burn it like <laughs> That means nothing. Yeah. For sure.
whether you have a hundred dollars or a hundred million dollars, killing someone is still killing someone. Same thing. So I don't know. I'm curious what you guys think about it. I, I would like to know and hear from our other half of the new subscribers. Um, have you guys heard of this before? Because it, it, it gets brought up every once in a while, but it hasn't really been dug into a lot. Uh, I might even start a 4chan frat boy um, playlist, you know, and just put all of them in there because um, I think it's a realistic possibility. I do. I do too. So I don't think it's that illogical or far fetched, to be honest, like at all. And I think that, um, you know, People don't put enough weight in fraternities and the secrecy and the brotherhood. There's weight in that. It matters. Yeah, it does. It does. It, whether you want to believe that or not, it matters. Um, and to some people, it really, really matters. Yeah. Um, like it's everything. So I don't know. Let us know what you think, and we will continue this topic later. Yep. To be continued.